path length in a graph. The adjacency matrix shows whether or not a path exists between a pair of vertices. In other words, it tabulates all paths of length 1 in a graph. In some applications, we are interested to know whether there are paths of length greater than 1 between a pair of vertices. Consider, for example, a simple graph shown in this figure. Note that vertices A and B are connected to vertex C, but it is not directly connected to B. Therefore, although there is no path of length 1 between A and B, there is also another path of length 2 because B is reachable from A via C. Using adjacency matrix, we can find paths of different lengths for graph. It can be shown that square of the adjacency matrix gives paths of length 2. If A is an adjacency matrix with element Aij in i throw and jth column, then the element Pij of the A square are given by the following formula for the matrix multiplication. Where sigma denotes sum obtained by varying k from 1 to n. Here, n is the number of vertices. The formula is based on the preceding observation that if a path exists between the ith and kth vertex and there is path between kth and jth vertex, then there is a path of length 2 between ith and jth vertex. Consider, for example, the directed graph shown in figure and associated adjacency matrix A. Next figure shows the square of A. From the matrix A square shown in the figure, we can conclude that there is one path of length 2 between A and C. This is, in fact, the path A, D, C. Also, there are two paths of length 2 between D and E. These are D, A, E and D, C, E, shown with bold arcs. It can be shown that if A is the adjacency matrix, then in general, A raised to the power n represents the number of paths of length n between different pairs of vertices of a graph. For example, a cube would tabulate the number of paths of length 3. The elements of the cube of adjacent matrix A are given by the formula. Where Pij refers to an element in the ith row and jth column of matrix A cube. In other words, Pij is the total number of paths of length 3 between the ith and jth vertex of a graph. This figure shows the graph matrix A raised to power 3. The matrix indicates that these paths are CDAE and CDDE. The first is a simple path since no vertex is repeated along path. The other is non-simple because vertex C is repeated. Click here to watch computations of path lengths. Path matrix. A path matrix for a graph shows whether or not a vertex is reachable from a given vertex, irrespective of the path length. In other words, a vertex A would be reachable from B if there exists a path of any length. A path matrix is a special matrix that tells if there is a path between a pair of vertices of a graph. We can define a path matrix P by the relations Pij equal 1 if there exists a path between the i and j vertex equal 0 otherwise. If the ith vertex is reachable from the jth vertex, then there must be at least one path of length 1 or of length 2 or length 3 and so on up to n, where n is the number of vertices in a graph.
Therefore, we can determine the reachability of all vertices by summing powers of adjacent matrix A as follow. Where N is the total number of vertices. The path matrix P can be determined by setting all non-zero elements in M to 1. Figure summarizes the computations of different powers of the adjacent matrix for a sample graph. By setting non-zero entries to 1, we obtain the path matrix. Observe that second vertex is not reachable from any other vertex. The last vertex is reachable from any other vertex. A graph is said to be strongly connected if for any pair of vertices A and B there is a path from A to B and there is also a path from B to A. The graph is said to be weakly connected if there is a path from A to B or there is a path from B to A. This means that for a strongly connected graph, the path matrix does not contain any zeros. The path matrix shown in the preceding example is weakly connected because there are several zeros in the matrix. Warshell's algorithm for path matrix. The computation of powers of the adjacency matrix is a laborious and time-consuming process. Warshall proposed an alternative method which is more efficient. In this formulation, the elements of the adjacency matrix are treated as logical values. The path matrix is computed using the following recursive formula. Pij denotes an element in the i row and jth column of the path matrix. The operators OR and AND are the logical operator. Figure lists the code for the Warshall's algorithm. It is assumed that the path matrix initially contains logical values which correspond to the entries in the adjacency matrix. Remember, character M% and bar represent Boolean operations AND and OR respectively in C++. Shortest path matrix in graph application, sometimes we are interested in finding the shortest path between a pair of vertices. The Warshall's algorithm gives information about the existence or absence of a path between any pair of vertices. An extension of Warshall's algorithm can be used to determine the shortest path between any two vertices. The shortest path algorithm uses a recursive relation by finding minimum distance between a sequence of vertices. In essence, it computes the sum of weights WIK and WKJ and compares these with the weight WIJ. If WIK plus WKJ is found to be smaller than WIJ, it is used in the next step of computation. In order to ensure that zero entries in the adjacency matrix are not considered as minimum values in a computational step, all zero values are initially set to a very large value, which is referred to as infinity. The code fragment for computation of shortest path is listed in figure. A temporary array Q is used to store results of computations. First, the non-zero elements of the weight matrix W are copied into Q. Then, the zero values are set to 32,000, which represent infinity for the purpose of computation. It is assumed that graph is directed and that weights are non-negative values. N represents the number of vertices in the graph. Click here to watch the computation of shortest path matrix for the sample graph. The graph can be generated interactively.